Grade 12s, um, welcome to one of our final modules. Um, this is module number 29 and we're going to look at the self-ionization of water and we're going to look at pH. So it's probably a pretty important one lesson to go over. There's lots of math here. You need your calculator. You need to be able to practice with your calculator. But the good news is that many of you have already done this in math class. So by the time we get to this unit or this topic in, in this unit, I always find that most people um, have experience using the log button on your calculator calculator, which is what we're going to use. And then we're going to just make sense of things by taking the pH of something and then the pOH. And this is another unit or topic where I would have given you some formulas in order to be able to calculate some of the things you need. Okay, let's get into it then. We cover sections 12.7 to 12.10 in the textbook if you're using that to follow along with. Page 33-34 in our notes. And when you get ready to do the review package, now you can do questions number 15 and 16 after, uh, after this little bit of a lesson. Okay, so here we go. What is it when we say the self-ionization or self-dissociation of water? Okay, this little table right here gives you um, an indicator to show you that of all the water molecules that you have, we always write them as water with a liquid state beside it, right? You remember that? We've been doing that for years, if it's at room temperature and it would be actually liquid. But it means that even if you think of it as an equilibrium, the equilibrium strongly favors water in this way. It favors the H2O in the liquid as the molecule. If you were to think about what that means, it means if you had millions and millions of water molecules, almost all of them would be stuck together as opposed to being dissociated into the hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. And so therefore, we write it as water liquid state. Okay, so when we talk about that down below, since very little of it is ionized, in other words, it's really negligible of what would be broken apart, that our water concentration initially is essentially the water concentration from equilibrium and then that's going to be what you see in your equation. Okay, so like all equilibrium constants, it is temperature dependent. Okay, so how would you write out this? This would be shown as another K value where KW equals, right, if you were to think of it in the ionization form as an equilibrium, you'd be looking at the concentration of your hydrogen ions and your concentration of your hydroxide ions, and this is what we call the dissociation constant of water, which is the concentration of the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions, which are the same as the concentration of the water before, because most of it stays together. This can be used as a constant, and so what does that actually equal? Well, at 25 degrees Celsius, this equals 1.00 times 10 to the exponent negative 14. If you were to have written down it as an equilibrium expression, remember where does this come from? It is the concentration of your hydrogen ions multiplied by your hydroxide ions over your water, except that this is a liquid, that's just say just an L, and remember that anytime you have a liquid, it is not included. Okay, so that's really where this KW factor comes from. And again, what is it? It could be called the dissociation constant of water, it can also be called the ion product constant. And this is what we're going to be looking at when we start and continue to add our acids to our bases to give us a salt and a water. Remember that that water that gets formed is the concentration of the H2O because it's all stuck together at least 555, 900 million, 999,999 are all stuck together and so we have a constant value for that. Okay? All right, 
Let's move on to the next part. The next part is just looking at now, what do we do with this pH value? By definition, what is pH? Remember that we always write pH with a little p and a capital H, and depending on whether you got to this unit when you were in grade 10 chemistry or not, that's okay. You would have talked about it again a little bit in grade 11 chemistry, hopefully you did. And if not, that's okay, let's talk about it right now. PH stands for the power of hydrogen. Essentially, it would be better if you called it pH to the exponent power because we're looking at the protons or the hydrogen ions that happen to be here. It's an alternative scale for expressing the concentration, right? The concentration of an acid or a base and specifically the concentration of the hydrogen ions. The standard SI unit for concentration, remember, is molarity. And so we're looking at moles per liter. Designated for, and here's an interesting concept. We're looking at dilute acids and bases, where the concentration is less than or equal to one mole per liter. So much of what we deal with is within this range that your pH scale is basically based on this range right here, okay? User-friendly, this pH scale is because there's a simple range. Remember, it goes from 0 to 14. If the value is positive, and it is for pH, so long as it is a dilute acid, okay? Did you know that your pH could be negative? It can be if you have a very strong, strong acid where you have a large concentration of the hydrogen ions, which you would have if you had something greater than one mole per liter, then your pH can actually be negative. So fun fact, okay? The unit for pH scale, does it have one? Nope, no unit, okay? It is unit less. What's the formula then? What's the formula for using the pH? How are we gonna figure this out? It is the power of hydrogen. We know a lot already about how to calculate that concentration of hydrogen ions based on an acid or, um, you know, and the dissociation of that acid, okay? Once you know the concentration of your hydrogen ions, you can use your log button on the calculator to calculate the pH. Okay, so the pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of your hydrogen ions. So this is where we have um, it, a scale that's a logarithmic scale, meaning that it's not just by a factor of one every time you're going up or down on the scale, but each of them is a multiplier of 10. So it's not 10 times 1, it's 10 times 10, and that's that logarithmic factor, okay? So find your log button on your calculator, make sure you're going to be able to figure this out because we're going to go from concentration of the acid to concentration of the hydrogen ions to figuring out the pH of a solution, okay? So log is what exponent 10 must be raised to the power of to give a value. So for example, log 100, that is equal to a 2 because it's 10 times 10. 10 to the exponent 2 equals 100. Okay? All right. So again, pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of your hydrogen ions. Okay? If you're to do the inverse of this, how do you calculate the hydrogen ion concentration if you're given the pH? You just do the inverse log of that. And so that formula is 10 to the exponent negative pH. And that will give you the molarity or the moles per liter for your hydrogen ions. Okay, so you'd be given both of these formulas. And the questions you're going to do are going to be given the pH, calculate the hydrogen ion concentration, and then it might ask you about the concentration of the acid, which you could be able to do. I'll show you how to do that. Or you could be given the concentration of the hydrogen ions and asked to calculate the pH of a solution. Okay, so 
with our logarithmic scale right here. Remember our neutral is right smack dab in the middle at seven. That means that the hydrogen ion concentration equals the hydroxide ion concentration, i.e. both concentrations are equal to 10 to the negative seven moles per liter. That 10 to the negative seven will give you a pH of seven, okay? As you move from seven up to 14, we are decreasing the acid concentration and we're increasing the base concentration. So the hydrogen ion concentration is gonna be less than the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, as we move from seven down to zero, so we're going this way, we're decreasing the concentration of the base and increasing the concentration of the acid. In this case, if you're less than seven, which is neutral on our pH scale, our hydrogen ion concentration is greater than our hydroxide concentration, okay? So let's write this down and talk about what that means. If something has a pH of one versus a pH of two, how do you figure that out? A pH of one versus a pH of two is only going to be 10 times more concentrated than a pH of two. Because this is a logarithmic scale, if a pH of one is compared to a pH of three, it's like 10 to the exponent three minus one, which is two, so 10 times 10. So because of the logarithmic scale, the jump between a pH of one and a pH of three is something that is a hundred times more concentrated than a pH of three. And what about if you're comparing a pH of two and a pH of seven? That's 10 to the exponent five, right? 10 to the exponent five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. A hundred thousand times more concentrated because of this logarithmic scale that we have, which is the pH scale, okay? So as pH decreases, we know that the concentration of the acid increases. The pH of a solution is inversely proportional to the acidity of a solution. So remember that as the pH goes down, for example, the concentration goes up. So there's an inverse relationship there with pH and acidity. Um, only confusing aspect of pH, yeah. Okay, great, if you don't understand that math, that's a little bit tricky. Okay, moving on. Did I forget anything on this page? I think we're good. Okay, so on to the next page. Here are the formulas that we've got and we're gonna be able to use. So, check, did we talk about the pH calculating the hydrogen ion concentration? Good. What if you're given the hydrogen ion concentration? Can you calculate the pH? Those are the two verses that you've got, okay? Next one. Does this make sense that the pOH, who would have thought we would have had to calculate that? The pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydro hydroxide concentration of the ions. And if you want to do the inverse, it's simply 10 to the exponent negative pOH, okay? We know that the dissociation of water, Kw is our constant. It is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. You could use this if you need to figure out one of those two hydroxide concentrations or the hydrogen ion concentration because we know that multiplying those two together actually has a value and it's 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Because on the pH scale, which is all dealing with acids or bases that are less than one mole per liter, the pH plus the pOH gives you a value of 14. Okay, this is why if you have a printer and you're lucky enough to be able to print this one page front and back, that would be helpful, okay? If not, just make yourself a good little summary sheet and, uh, and keep on working away, but write down these examples. So for the first example right here, remember the pH, can we have something greater than or less than 14? Sure can. Okay, there's our disclaimer. Well, what if the acid concentration or the base concentration is greater than one mole per liter? Then yep, that's what you're gonna end up with. Try it on your calculator and see. For example, what if the pH is negative one, right? Again, who would have thought we were doing pHs off of that one, uh, zero to 14 scale? 
So if it's negative one, could you calculate the hydrogen ion concentration? Well, you're gonna get a concentration of an acid that's 10 moles per liter. Okay, what does that mean? It means that you have a very strong concentration of hydrochloric acid, which again is a strong acid, so 100% dissociation here. Concentration of the HCl, therefore, if you know the concentration of the hydrogen ions, it comes to 10 moles per liter. This is a strong acid, goes to completion, then the concentration of your hydrochloric acid is also going to be 10 moles per liter. Okay, does it work this way? Only if it's a binary acid, right? One to one ratio. What if you're dealing with sulfuric acid? So what if you had a pH of a solution and it was negative one? Okay, same question, but what if those hydrogen ions came from sulfuric acid? So you still get 10 moles per liter, but this is sulfuric acid that has a ratio of two to one. So two times the hydrogen ion concentration, does that make sense that this acid concentration is five moles per liter? So the concentration of sulfuric acid with a pH of negative one would be five moles per liter. Does that make sense? Write that one down, go back and, and make sure that you've sort of got that clear in your head. Let's look at the next example. What if it says your pH is 15? Okay, so now you know that you're trying to figure out a base, and so how do you figure out the concentration of your hydroxide ions? Well, you know that your pH plus your pOH is equal to 14. So therefore, your pOH is equal to negative one. Calculate the concentration of the hydroxide based on the formula that you'd be given, and you end up with 10 to the one, 10 moles per liter, of your hydroxide. And if you were dealing with sodium hydroxide, which is a one to one ratio, that's what you've just solved for here. And then you know that your concentration of your sodium hydroxide is also 10 moles per liter. Okay, great if you've got strong acids and strong bases. Okay, reminder, your common strong acids and strong bases you're gonna memorize. So you've memorized this list and this list and the difference between concentrated versus strong and you know that a strong acid or base dissociates 100% and a weak one dissociates less than 100%, quite a bit less, okay? Now, last part of this is looking at how do you figure out significant digits when you're using your pH calculations? Watch this. For a concentration of hydrogen ions, that would be 0 0.00025 moles per liter. That translates just into 2.5 times 10 to the negative four. Because the power of negative four is just indicating the placeholders of those zeros, right? You actually only have two significant digits. So that's all the same rules that we've been um, working on um, about calculating the number of significant digits. But what does that now mean with regards to calculating the pH? So watch this. Once you take your pH and you pop it into your, or sorry, once you take your hydrogen ion concentration, you pop it into your formula to calculate the pH. How do you express it with the right number of significant digits? You take the fact that you had two significant digits in your hydro, sorry, your hydrogen ion concentration, that translates into two significant digits in the decimal places, okay? Because the first value really isn't significant just because it was one of those derived from the power of 10. Just go with the rule and uh, you can certainly look at it more in detail, but this little table here gets you practicing looking at significant digits and just how you figure them out, okay? So 9.5 times 10 to the negative five, if that's my concentration, and again, this table is great, the answers are here, and practice with your calculator and make sure you know how to use your log button, okay? So put that value in, that's your hydrogen ion concentration. What is your pH? Do you see that you go from having two significant digits because it's 9.5, then your answer is going to have two decimal places. So once you get it in your calculator, you're just gonna be able to write 4.02, and that's as um, significant as you need to be able to put for that question. 
Next one, 7.224 times 10 to the negative 8. Again, you're looking at a value with four significant digits, so then your pH has four decimal places. And you'd be able to go vice versa, right? Reverse that if you had your pH, which you do for the next one. See how many decimal places I've got here? I've only got one decimal place here, one significant digit, and my answer was 8 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so practice those, and then you're going to do some of these questions down here, and I'm going to do one of them with you right now in this video. I'm going to do the, calculate the pH, um, if you have a 0.034 mole per liter solution of nitric acid, then you're going to try sulfuric acid, and then you're going to try acetic acid, all with the same um, concentration, just you're looking at different acids, and so then you're going to practice your ratio of ions, and then there's another question there as well, and then review package 15 and 16. Okay, so let's go and do one of those together. Um, pause the video now if you want to stop and, and move on and just give it a go. Um, and if you want to do an example with me, I am going to do the first one. So calculate the pH of a 0.034 mole per liter solution of nitric acid. Let's try that one first. Strong acid, 100% dissociation to our hydrogen ions and our nitrate ions. Okay, so what is this telling me? It's telling me that the concentration of my hydrogen ions is 0.034 moles per liter. It also tells me that I know my acid concentration, 0.034 moles per liter. I need to calculate the pH, okay? So here's my formula, pH equals negative log of the concentration of my hydrogen ions, negative log of 0.034. Pop that into your um, calculator. Make sure you can solve using the log button on your calculator and you get a pH of 1.47. And again, I've got a value with two significant digits, so my pH is going to have two decimal places. Okay? The next one, you're going to do sulfuric acid. So for B, you need to do H2SO4, strong acid again, but have a look. This time you get two times the hydrogen ions and one sulfate because it's got the two negative charge, AQ. Okay, so what does that tell me? It tells me I have two times 0.034 moles per liter. My concentration of hydrogen ions in this case then is 0.068 moles per liter. What was the concentration of my H2SO4? It was 0.034 moles per liter. But when I'm calculating the hydrogen ion concentration to get my pH, of course, it's this concentration in total, because picture that solution. I've got twice as many hydrogen ions because it tells me that this was a one to two ratio, right? Okay, so now, what's the pH of this solution? Can you see how now you're gonna get a different pH depending on the kind of acid that you've got? Negative log concentration of your hydrogen ions, negative log 0.06. 8, answer 1.17. And again, two significant digits in my acid concentration, and then you reflect it with the pH with two decimal places. Okay, when you go to C, you're dealing with acetic acid, which is a weak acid, and so then can you actually calculate that? You won't be able to because this concentration that you're going to have, it would be CH3COOH, okay? Equilibrium, okay, because it's going to be weak, and you would get CH3COO negative and H ion concentration. This is going to be less than 0.034 moles per liter, and this is going to be way less than 0.034 mole moles per liter. So can we calculate that yet? No, we don't know how because we don't actually know. Now, if you were given the pH of that, you could do the reverse way, couldn't you? You could take the pH to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration. That's not what this question asked you for, but you certainly could do that. 
Okay, try the next parts of those, a few examples to do, and that is all about acids and bases and getting us started with calculating the pH. Okay, so again, I know this was a little bit of a tricky one and I wish we weren't doing this via distant learning, but if you're still with me and you're still working away, um, good for you. This is a tricky topic. Okay.